Since the first cord blood transplant, its value has been apparent. Although many have heard about its use in cancer treatments, where a marrow match has not been found, there are many other conditions it has helped and even cured. In fact, cord blood pioneer Dr. Norman Endy, professor of pathology at New Jersey School of Medicine and Dentistry, and pictured here with his equally important brother Milton, stated in Scientific American that cord blood stem cells have produced promising results when tested in preclinical animal models of nearly every disease that embryonic stem cells have been postulated to help. The brothers' work in cord blood began in the 1960s when Milton pondered why cancer in babies was so rare and began injecting patients with cord blood. Though it didn't cure the cancer, it did lengthen the lifespan. They point out that the stem cells from cord blood is neither adult nor embryonic, but somewhere in between with the best of each. And unlike their embryonic counterparts, umbilical stem cells do not act like a malignancy. Indeed, the Endy brothers have worked on using cord blood in treating Lou Gehrig's disease, Huntington disease, diabetes, and more. They've had great success, but have difficulty acquiring funding for their research because embryonic takes precedence. In fact, despite having already helped thousands of people and a global birth rate of 100 million babies a year, yielding an almost inexhaustible source of pluripotent cells to match all the populations, human embryonic stem cell research still receives 20 times the amount of money as does cord blood research in the United States. The governor apparently doesn't know that cord blood research is stem cell research and that the umbilical cord matrix appears to be a rich, non-controversial, and inexhaustible source of primitive mesenchymal stem cells, cells that show the same pluripotent abilities as embryonic. Another expert sees many uses for cord blood. Joanne Katzberg, chief of the Division of Bone and Marrow Transplant at Duke University, states that in the future we will be using these cells for treatment of neurodegenerative diseases and other forms of tissue repair and regeneration. And that's already being translated into cures. Hundreds of clinical trials are currently recruiting for stem cells from cord blood. A quick look at the top 10 causes of death in the United States and studies that show that they can or are being treated using stem cells from cord blood proves that for neurological issues, it's been shown that cord blood derived stem cells differentiate into functional neuron like cells in vitro or outside the body, which is probably why the umbilical cord blood transplantation improves mobility after spinal cord injury. Yet cord blood does not have to become brain cells to protect the brain. Abby Pell was born with moderate to severe brain damage in three out of four of her lobes, and after what her mother described as a 20-minute non-invasive procedure with zero risk to the child, she was infused with her own cord blood stem cells. She has shown remarkable improvement. She's not 100% on goal for a child of her age of 22 months, but she does appropriately play with toys and is well working on being able to walk. This has been shown also when it comes to Lou Gehrig's disease, or ALS. Stem cells derived from human umbilical cord blood migrated to damaged areas in the brain and spinal cord caused by disease or injury and provide some therapeutic benefit, according to two new animal studies. Cord blood cells administered intravenously delayed disease progression and improved the survival of mice genetically programmed to develop ALS. The cells found their way not only to the regions of the brain stem, brain, and spinal cord attacked by ALS but also circulated to organs outside the central nervous system, such as the lungs, heart, and spleen. This is very important because implanting neural stem cells surgically is widely considered an unrealistic option for ALS because motor neuron damage spreads across several regions, such as the brain, brain stem, and spinal cord, and it would require too many complex targets for transplantation, such as what has been proposed using embryonic stem cells. In a second study, they demonstrated that intravenous injections of human umbilical cord blood cells were drawn directly to the site of trauma in rats with spinal cord injuries and helped restore some motor function. Moving on to non-neurologic diseases, Kion Pen was born with sickle cell disease. Here's a slide showing the difference between normal and sickle cells. Sickle cell is a genetic disease affecting more than 70,000 people in the United States the vast majority of which being African Americans since the genetic condition is actually advantageous in the malaria rampant continent. At age 5, Kion suffered a stroke in addition to joint and knee complications. 
but he became the first to be transfused with cord blood for this condition, after which he could produce normal red blood cells with normal hemoglobin, and much of his joint swelling subsided. He was pronounced cured a year later, and eight years after the transplant, the high school graduate plans to train as a chef. Now, because less than one quarter of the patients with severe sickle cell disease will have a matched sibling donor that can serve as a bone marrow transplant donor, cord blood is very important in helping those afflicted with this disorder. And currently, clinical trials are recruiting, and they will offer this treatment to children with severe sickle cell disease that do not have a matching sibling for bone marrow transplant. Perhaps you've seen the movie Lorenzo's Oil, which depicts ALD. This is Spencer. Doctors transplanted umbilical cord blood stem cells into Spencer in hopes that the healthy stem cells would help his body break down the fat molecules. The stem cells did what the doctors hoped. They stopped Spencer's ALD, but something else happened too, something the doctor discusses gingerly. The treatment not only stopped the disease, it also reversed the effects ALD had on Spencer's brain, contradicting the scientific notion that it is impossible to heal the brain, and today Spencer is a normal, healthy seven-year-old boy. Cord blood has also become an option for a much more rare condition called hurlers. This is Anthony Dones at age two. He was diagnosed at four months old with a rare genetic bone disorder called osteopetrosis, and he received a cord blood transplant one month later. He turned four last July, and he can count it 100 in English and Spanish. He knows the ABCs in English and Spanish, and he's already done a piano recital. You can read more about him, his transplant, and his progress at this website. Anthony's not the only child with hurlers, and with the success of him and others, phase two clinical trials are now being recruited. Cord blood has also provided success in rebuilding the immune system. Dr. David T. Harris of the University of Arizona believes that stem cells found in umbilical cord appear to be the equivalent of stem cells found in embryos. Nerve and heart tissue regeneration in animals, specifically mice, have proven highly successful in labs, and he expects to perform the first human cornea transplant from these stem cells within the next year. A graduate student in microbiology and immunology and research specialist said his lab is starting a project where cartilage tissue is grown from stem cells using umbilical cord tissue. He says that tissue rejection is a major problem for organ transplant today, and through this type of research, stem cells can be isolated and made into any cell desired because of their vital role in tissue repair. The advantages of stem cells are that they are easily obtained without risk to patient or mother. They can be stored for personal use or donated to, for others. They're very important for ethnic minorities for whom bone marrow donors are difficult to locate. There's less risk of infectious disease contamination. There are much less stringent matching requirements for transplantation. There are fewer side effects after transplantation, and they are an inexpensive form of biological insurance. The downside of cord blood? You don't get very many at one time. They're a little hard to expand. There is still a chance of rejection. Not enough donors exist of all races, and there are many shysters. I can't stress hard enough after making all these points about what cord blood stem cells can do, unless I point out that, that there are snake oil salesmen galore. Now, if they only promise things that are unproven, that would be bad enough. But because they generally use research, not therapy quality stem cells, the cells they use may have contaminants and have not been purified to this level safe for you or your loved ones. So please stick to clinical trials or researchers that you know have effectively done work on this. Also, I'd like to point out that because this works for some at this time, it is not proof that it will work for everyone with the condition. And just because it works with animals does not guarantee it will work with humans. Must research still needs to be done to identify why these populations differ so that the best form of therapy can be developed and be available for each individual. But at this time, it is clear that cord blood and its stem cells offer what appears to be a quick, inexpensive, and non-invasive therapy option for many. And that is why the bill our governor dismissed is so important to the people of this state, particularly minorities for whom cord blood banking has been too expensive to provide enough high-quality units for their treatment. Article referenced in this episode are available on the show's companion website. I'd like to close with the child who Barack Obama's website states has been cured of his cerebral palsy from cord blood stem cells.